and I'll thank you never to threaten me. I don't take threats lightly. I want my money. I owe you nothing. My money? Get off my property. Just because you're rich, you think you can get away with anything. I'll have the police after you. I'm not afraid of you, Mr. Borden. I'll have to see what I can do about that. I won't warn you again. I have nothing further to say on that. Then I will be responsible. Get out of my house. Gladly. Elizabeth, were you listening? I didn't mean to, Father, but your voice was so strong. Who was that man? It's no concern of yours. Was it Mr. Souza? I've already told you that it's a matter that doesn't concern you. I could hear you in my room. I was frightened. Where's your sister? Emma went to the train to meet Aunt Vinny. She knows you don't like her father. Please try to make her feel welcome. I don't need you, Elizabeth, to remind me of manners. Why are you staring? That coat. It's so heavy and the heat's so pressing. You don't look well. Didn't you have breakfast? I can't eat mutton broth for breakfast, and besides, it looked to me as if I had turned. When we had it for supper last night, I thought it tasted sour. What if it did? I heard Mrs. Borden up and about last night. Did it make her ill? She had a stomach complaint, yes. So did I. I spent it that night. The mutton. I'm sure of it. Let me throw it out. Have Bridget warm it for my lunch. Waste not, want not. And I'll ask you once again, Elizabeth, not to refer to your mother as Mrs. Borden. She's not my mother. She's your wife. My mother is dead. You're a strange girl. So much spite in you. Father? Mm hmm? Father, I would like to have a party here at the house. You know my feelings about frivolity. I have a position in Fall River. Don't give yourself airs, my girl. Some college students from Boston will be visiting church this weekend. I'd like to invite them to visit. And you needn't worry about the expense. Em and I will share in that. My house is not a recreation hall. You're being unreasonable, Father. Perhaps when you've learned to address my wife as mother, we can consider the matter. Good morning, Elizabeth. Good morning, Father. So hot. Would you like me to set out a picture of ice water, Miss Lizzie? No. The more I drink, the thirstier I get. You do need anything for breakfast. There's plenty there. I was afraid there would be. Your father does like mutton. He wants you to heat up what's left for his lunch. I was hoping we could throw it out. So was I. It's all lumpy and there's a scum on top. Serve it extra hot. My father's wife won't notice. Never a scrap of food goes to waste in this house. Last place I worked with eggs for breakfast. Every morning. I could fix you some. Don't bother. My father's wife would only use it against me. She'd tell my father that I was too grand to eat what everyone else did. It's not as if your father can't afford to eat better. My father and his wife don't understand that life can be enjoyed. My father only has two diversions, making money and keeping it. That's a sore point with Mr. Souza. How do you mean? You know how your father is. Never a day late when it comes to my pay, but with people from the other side of town, it's different. He says if you give them all their money at once, they'll spend it foolishly. You mean foreign people. Father is always afraid they're going to do something he doesn't approve of. Was that who he was talking with? Mr. Souza? I haven't seen Mr. Souza this morning. Weren't you just in the kitchen? When? A few moments ago. No, I just came in from the barn. Didn't you see someone leave the house? No. From the back? No, I didn't. I don't know why fool jigsaw puzzles. I don't like them. Feeling better, Mrs. Borden? Never mind how I'm feeling. It's probably your bad cooking that turned my stomach. Good morning, Elizabeth. You've never complained about my cooking before. It has never made me sick before. I'll need your keys. Why? You've got a guest coming. Miss Emma's bringing her back from the station. I forgot. Not likely. With all this obvious heat, I bet it's stuffy up there. Go up there and turn out the mattress and set up fresh sheets. I know, I know. Don't unlock any of the doors. When you're done, give me back the keys. I always do, don't I? Getting rid of her. Too much mouth. I ought to go to Boston and Lawrence and sweat in those shoe factories and see how she likes that. You won't get anyone to work as hard as she does for three dollars a week. She gets her meals. Mutton broth. 
I don't know why you remain in this house, Elizabeth. You hate it so. It isn't this house that I hate. You have no reason to speak to me the way you do. I'd prefer it if I had no reason to speak to you at all. You make things so difficult for your father. And yourself. I can't change the way you feel about me, Elizabeth, but I wish you would stop trying to turn your sister against me. I'm sure I don't know what you mean. You know perfectly well what I mean. I won't put up with your ways for much longer. I mean what I say, Elizabeth. Not feeling well? Spent a bad night. Don't concern yourself. Hurry up, Aunt Vinny. I have to pay the driver. I've already taken care of that. I'd better go upstairs and dress. That's a good idea. You wouldn't want Aunt Vinny to think you were slovenly. Lizzie is so pleased you're paying us a visit. <laughs> I'm pleased that she's pleased. She's here, Lizzie. Aunt Vinny! Hello, Lizzie. Hello. Are you tired? Not in the least, but I will sit down. Place hasn't changed much. Father likes it this way. If you try to put up a new picture or move a chair, it upsets him terribly. Andrew is as set in his ways as the everlasting hills of Zion. Oh, that reminds me. How is your Sunday school coming along? Didn't you know? The church fellowship has put Lizzie in charge of all the classes. All? I'm to supervise. They must think a great deal of your abilities. I do my best. Don't listen to her, Aunt Finney. She's being modest. I know how she is. Lizzie can do anything she sets her mind to. In all fairness, I must say, the Sunday school situation hasn't been all it might be. I think it's awfully important to keep the children's interest, make Sunday school something they look forward to. When I was a little girl, I always had trouble staying awake in Sunday school, but I didn't have a teacher like Lizzie Borden. How long are you staying? A long time, I hope. I have some business matters to discuss with your father. Oh? That shouldn't take long, and then the three of us will have a nice visit. Where's Abby? My father's wife will be down later. She isn't feeling well. I'm sorry to hear that. I think it's the heat. I don't think Bridget was with us the last time you were here, Aunt Vinny. No, it was a girl named Maggie. Maggie went to Vermont. She's working in a cannery. Bridget, this is my dear mother's sister, Mrs. Morse. Welcome, Mom. I just turned your mattress. Thank you, Bridget. I'll go upstairs and wash off some of the grime. Trains are so dirty. Here's the suitcase. I open the windows upstairs, but there's not much fresh air. I hate August. The heat always makes me feel as if something's hanging over me that I can't throw off. It's going to be such fun having Aunt Vinny here with us. I wonder what business she has with Father. Probably something about Mother's estate. Yes, but what? You're always so concerned about estates and wills and... business. <laughs> you and Father make a pair. Watch out for the pennies, Emma, and the dollars will take care of themselves. Did you ask him? Who? Oh. Father, of course. Did you ask him about the party? Yes. What did he say? He said he'd think about it. Oh, Lizzie, I'd never have dared ask. A father frightens me so. You leave father to me. It'd be such fun to have a party. And it won't cost him anything. I explained that you and I would bear the expense. Ready for your surprise? Surprise? I saw it in the jeweler's window. The gem in the center is your birthstone. Oh, Lizzie, you're so good and kind. I think you're the most thoughtful person I've ever known. Go on, take it. I'll wear it to the party. You must go and see if you can make Aunt Vinny comfortable. Too bad we don't have a garden of our own. If only our father's wife didn't consider fresh flowers a foolishness. Run along and see Aunt Vinny. Susa. Come in, Mr. Souza. It's quite all right. Your father said you wanted to have the roof on the barn patched up. He isn't here right now. He'll be back for lunch. I don't think I can start till next week. Uh, Mrs. Churchill wants me to cut down some dead trees. That's hard work. It takes a few days. You can discuss that with my father. You've got a dead tree out the back of the barn. I ought to cut that down too. I'm sure your, my father will be agreeable if the price is right. I've got a new one that'll do the trick. A new what? See? Nice, huh? Wait, there's more. We face the future fortified only with the lessons that we have learned from the past. It is today that we create a world in the very real sense. I derive a great deal of strength of the writings of Miss Anthony. 
She is a true pioneer. What do you think of women's rights, Aunt Vinny? I must confess I haven't given the matter much thought. That's the problem. If we don't give the matter much thought, we can hardly expect men to do so. Your niece has been an inspiration to us all, Mrs. Morse. Oh, that isn't to say there hasn't been some criticism. People are always trying to hold back progress. I agree wholeheartedly with the aims of the women's suffrage movement. Like Susan B. Anthony, I believe that the American woman is close to being accepted as equal under the laws of our land. She isn't now? Certainly not, Bridget. You ask the same questions every time we discuss this topic. It's hard for me to understand. What good's a vote to me? There's more to it than that. Surely you have aspirations. I have. What are they? I would like to get another 50 cents a week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid you and Miss Anthony have a rough road ahead. The way I look at it, another 50 cents a day is as good as a boat any day. My aunt is quite right. You're hopeless. <laughs> I suspect I am. <laughs> <clears throat> I thought you'd be finished with your seminar by now, Elizabeth. We're almost finished, Father. I'll finish up in the kitchen. It was especially interesting tonight, Mrs. Borden. You should join us one evening. Emma, if you and your sister stay up late, make sure you lock all the doors. I didn't realize how late it was. It must be close to nine o'clock. Imagine. I must be getting along. It's a shame Reverend Mr. Jubb couldn't make it. Mr. Jubb? I didn't know he shared my daughter's enthusiasm for women's suffrage. Lizzie is a persuasive speaker. Don't tell me she's persuaded you. She set me to thinking. I credited you with more sense, Finny. No need to be rude, Andrew. Lizzie is quite right. Women don't share equally in our society. Why should they? They're sheltered, cared for, protected. Yes, at the insistence of men. Stuff and nonsense. I hope you don't preach any of this rubbish in your Sunday school classes. I'm a God-fearing woman, Father. I would never preach anything I didn't feel was right and good for all. I'm glad to hear it. It was a pleasure meeting you, Mrs. Morse. I hope we'll see more of each other, my dear. So do I. Good night, Alice. I'll see you tomorrow, Emma. Don't forget our little shopping trip. <laughs> she won't. <laughs> good evening, Mr. Borden. Alice? It's Reverend Jubb. I'm sorry for being late. I had to visit the hospital, and before I was through, the time had slipped away. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Borden. Mr. Jubb? Would you like something hot to drink, Father? I would, but I'll let Bridget get it. That's what she's paid for. Have I come at a bad time? <laughs> you should be used to Father and his ways by now. He doesn't mean anything by his curtness. I'll be on my way now. Wait, I'll walk you to the corner. I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Oh, I'm Mrs. Morris, Lizzie's aunt. I'm sorry, Erin, I thought you two had met. You sit down. Thank you. How did the seminar go? Mrs. Churchill didn't show up. I was afraid she wouldn't. Oh? I could do with some more milk, helps me sleep. Don't let us run you off. I'll only be in the kitchen. Mr. Jubb, may I get something for you? No, no thank you. Acting rather mysterious. What's the trouble? It's Mrs. Churchill. What about her? I'm afraid she's behaving badly. Behaving badly? You know she's run the senior Sunday school class for many years. I'm not likely to forget it. She reminds me of that fact every chance she gets. <laughs> yes, I'm afraid she's rather possessive of the post, <laughs> isn't she? I believe she feels she has the post for life. The point is... What, 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 what I mean to say is, uh, let me see how best I can express it. Poor Aaron, what a task you have, trying to keep everyone in the fellowship happy. I think I know what you're trying to say. Mrs. Churchill is upset that she was an appointed supervisor. That's it, isn't it? I admire the way you get right to the heart of any problem. I'm not exactly a diplomat, am I? I wouldn't say that. I've never doubted your abilities. You're, you're clever, dependable, intelligent. <laughs> These are the victories I presume that to make me qualified to supervise. Absolutely. 
And Mrs. Churchill doesn't see it that way, and she's making things rather unpleasant for you. Exactly. Let me see what I can do to unruffle her feathers. It's difficult enough having her for a neighbor. I don't want her for an adversary. <laughs> you seem to have solved my problem with a minimum of effort, as usual, Miss Borden. Leave Mrs. Churchill to me, Mr. Jubb. Don't think me rude, but I must be on my way. I promised to stop off at the city jail. Seems there are need of a clergyman there, as well as at the hospital. I'll walk part of the way with you. I like that. <laughs> Aunt Minnie! Yes? Mr. Jubb is leaving. I'll walk with him to the corner. It was a pleasure meeting you, Reverend Jubb. Will you be staying long in Fall River? That... that depends. I'll be back shortly. Good night, Mrs. Morris. Good night, Reverend Jubb. I put in a dash of cinnamon. Thank you, Bridget. It looks good. It's nice and hot. That's the main thing. Miss Lizzie gone out? With Reverend Jubb. He didn't stay long, did he? I suspect he preferred to be alone with my niece. I'll be up in my room if you need anything. Mr. Borden will double check to make sure the doors are locked. He certainly worries about locking up, doesn't he? Every door in the house has a lock and key. What's he afraid of? There have been robberies in the neighborhood. None here, I trust. Someone got into the barn and stole a harness. Didn't anyone see them? Happened early in the morning, before anyone was up. Good night, Mrs. Morse. Night, Bridget. Reverend Mr. Job gone? You didn't exactly make him welcome, Andrew. If he wants to visit my house, let him come at a decent hour. Nine o'clock in the evening isn't exactly the hour before dawn. Might as well be, as far as I'm concerned. He shouldn't encourage Elizabeth in her wild ideas. From the little I saw of him, I got the impression he was rather taken with your daughter. Elizabeth can be quite charming when she chooses. Where are they? Gone for a walk. Lizzie said she'd be back shortly. I'll wait up for her. There's no need, Andrew. Lizzie is a young woman capable of taking care of herself. I prefer to wait until everyone's in. So you can lock up? Yes. You haven't changed much over the years. You never were what some people might term a trusting man. Why are you here? For a visit. That's all. There's no sense in trying to deceive you, is there? Say what you have to say. Andrew, before my sister died, she made it clear that the property she owned in New Hampshire should come to me. I've never pressed the point. Until now, I've never felt the need. Not legal, you know. Unless it's in black and white. We both heard her say it. You promised her that you'd see to her wish. She was a sick woman. We both know that. She knew it too. What of it? What you're saying is, you want to hold me to the wish of a dying woman. She didn't know what she was saying half the time. I've suffered some financial setbacks. The truth of the matter is, I'm penniless. You should learn to live frugally. We can't all live the way you do, Andrew. It takes talent to be a successful miser. Forgive me, I shouldn't have said that. It's the sort of thing I'd expect from Elizabeth. You both have much in common. I would like the property. I would like for you to honor my sister's wish. You have no claim on the property. Legally, perhaps not. Morally, I'm most assuredly entitled to it. Why have you waited all this time? Hoping that you would give me the deed without my asking. Having to come to you like this, it's humiliating. I didn't press the point before because I didn't need help until now. I will give you a small sum. I have no wish to sell the property. The property is not yours to sell, Vinny. It's mine legally, which is the only right that matters. You can't believe that. It's more important that you believe it. There's a certain nuisance value to your claim, and with the money I shall give you, I trust that even that will cease. Nuisance value? I shall, of course, require you to sign a paper that the amount I pay will leave to you any financial responsibility toward you. I can't believe what I'm hearing. Be sensible, Vinny. I am a businessman. I have no time for sentiment. What I propose is fair and just. Sometimes I wonder what my sister ever saw in you. That needn't concern you. You were never this cold before. Never so grasping, never so selfish. I always thought you a man without much heart, but to deny your dead wife's wish, that's cruel, wicked. Don't think I don't know what's made you the way you are. 
Abby, she's done it. She's told you to hold on to every bit and piece of land, hasn't she? I've never seen you this way, Vinny. I don't understand you at all. Andrew, I will ask you again. Will you honor my sister's dying wish? Will you deed me the New Hampshire farm? Nighttime is as hot as daytime in Fall River. Not a hint of a breeze. We'll talk about this later. Is anything the matter with Aunt Vinny? Family business. Don't concern yourself. Um, I'm family, aren't I? Why trouble your pretty little head with business affairs? Father, you play right into Lizzie's hands. Is it any wonder she fights for women's rights when you supply wood for the fire? You're fond of your sister, aren't you, Emma? I think Lizzie is the most remarkable woman I've ever known. Maybe that's because after Mama died, she was the only female close by I could trust and love. I guess I've always put Lizzie in the role of mother on a pedestal. But you have a mother again. Abby. I wish we could all be happy together. I wish you and Lizzie didn't quarrel so much. You're a good daughter, Emma. Go to bed. You see, you treat me like a child and don't even know it. You'll always be a child to me, Emma. You're my baby. Father, you can be so kind at times. Poor Mr. Jeb. He has such a good heart. People take advantage. You have a good heart too, Elizabeth. You should be careful people don't take advantage of you. I'll try to see that it doesn't happen. Are you sure I can't get you something from the kitchen? There's Johnny Cake. No, I've had quite enough of Bridget's cooking for a while. That's why your mother and I ate out this evening. What would you say if I told you I was planning on selling the house? Selling it? Uh-huh. Emma would disapprove, but I've, I wish we could get rid of it. I've always hated it. Where would we move? I have no idea. Only a passing thought. Father, there are some wonderful new houses being built on the hill above the harbor. Let me show them to you. They even have indoor plumbing. I hate the outhouse. <laughs> Indoor plumbing is a new thing of unnecessary expensive. Some of us are better suited to the farmyard than others. That's enough. We were having such a pleasant time until you came downstairs. I live here too, Elizabeth. I try not to get in your way. Why must you dislike me so? <sighs> it's not easy for a man living in a house of women. Did you lock up? I'll tend to it later. Go around and see to the barn door. We don't want to lose another harness. Father. Thank you for letting Lizzie and me have our party. Why doesn't he stand up to that peasant? I think he's wary of arguing. How could he marry such a woman after mother? She's petty and dull. Stupid. I've never known someone who can get so much pleasure from being so unpleasant. Remember your promise. You will never call her mother. Lizzie, please. You will never call her mother. I never have. Have I? Why must you badger Emma? Let her alone. Aunt Betty, what's wrong? You've been crying. <laughs> Forgive me, I don't mean to. I can't help myself. What happened? Sit here. I asked your father to help me. I asked him to give me the farm in New Hampshire. The one mother wanted you to have. Yes. <laughs> he won't do it. That was mother's dying wish. The stocks I counted on for dividends have gone down to nothing. I don't know what I'm going to do. Why didn't you come to Emma and me? We have some money mother left us. Our trust funds. I could live at the farm. I could rent out land. I wouldn't have to depend on charity. You say father refused? Yes. He refused. Why would he turn his back on Mother's wish? There's your answer. She's turned your father against me. She's the one.
may come in, Sousa. I finished chopping down the dead tree. Good. Um, Mr. Borden, sir? Hmm? What is it? Um, I wonder, Mr. Borden, sir? Um, could I have my money? Sousa, if I give you people too much money all at once, you'll only spend it foolishly. But I did work fast, I did a good job. I would expect no less. A true workman is worth his hire. Always remember that. Then, can I have my money? Here you are. Where's the rest of it? Each week I will give you a certain amount. That way you are protected against yourself. You owe me some last month too. You people don't understand business. You will get what you are owed, but in a sensible, business-like fashion. Trust me, Susan. It's for your own good. I do not wish to be treated like a child, Mr. Borden. Don't take that tone with me. I want my money now. You will get your money when I decide you deserve it. Get out. Don't talk to me as if I was a dog. I'll send for the police. You know what they do to you people when there's a complaint. No, Sousa. The back door. No, Borden. The front door. Watch what you're doing, Mr. Sousa. Did you see that, Mr. Borden? <clears throat> I apologize, Mrs. Churchill. I suspect he's been drinking. You know how these foreigners are. I ran him off. He won't be working around here again. Sit down. Not safe to walk across the street anymore. I'll deal with Sousa in my own room. Stifling in the barn. What are you doing out in the barn? I want to plan a day's fishing. I was looking for a sinker. Good morning, Mrs. Churchill. Good morning, Elizabeth. You two probably want to discuss church matters. If you'll excuse me, Mrs. Churchill. Of course. I apologize again for Sousa. It's already forgotten. What about Mr. Sousa? He almost knocked me down. Doesn't sound like him. Normally he's so quiet about everything he does. Well, I didn't make it up. I'm sure you didn't. May I get you a cup of coffee? No, thank you. Tea? Nothing. I've been meaning to pay you a visit for some time. I realize that your time is valuable, and I do live so far away. Such a great deal to travel right across the street. I've been so busy. Not too busy to plan a day's fishing. What did you want to talk about? You know perfectly well, Elizabeth. Why don't you call me Lizzie? No. Can't we be friends? That depends on you. You're upset because the church fellowship has appointed me in charge of the Sunday school classes. You head so many other committees. You have so many other interests. I have devoted many years to my Sunday school teaching. I was teaching long before you even got interested. This fellowship owes me something. I deserve the position that you've taken from me. I haven't taken anything from you. I was offered the post and I accepted. Of course. I don't contribute as heavily to the church as you do. I'm not wealthy. Nor am I. You're not exactly penniless. Are you suggesting that I bought the post? I'm not as clever as you. I can't twist people around my finger. You have a champion in Reverend Mr. Job. What you've suggested is both inaccurate and insulting. I should be in charge of the Sunday school department. Well, you're not. I am. What do you suspect I do? Resign. You can't be serious. I am. I see. I'll be just as candid with you. I believe I was selected because for some time, the results in the classes have been less than admirable. I've reviewed your teachings and frankly, I consider you a poor teacher. How dare you! Not only will I keep my post, but I shall do everything in my power to convince Mr. Job into retiring you to a less taxing position with the fellowship. You would take away the one thing that means everything to me? 
I'm concerned for the children, not for you. I know your feelings towards me. We could never work together. If you, if you take away my teaching, what will I do? Have you considered becoming a Quaker? Oh. <laughs> Why, hello, Mrs. Churchill. Oh. What's the matter with her? She's thinking of becoming a Quaker. A Quaker? Why are you laughing? I think it's the heat. I can feel it baking my brain. I'll be off now, Abby. Did you tell her? Tell me what? It's not important. Tell her, Andrew. Elizabeth, your mother and I... She's not my mother. Your mother and I think it would be best if you... If I what, father? If you... If you lived somewhere else. Live somewhere else? You're not happy here. Live somewhere else? Never a kind word from you. You turned Emma against me. I was born in this house. My mother lived and died in this house. Elizabeth, it's pointless to argue. You have money of your own. You don't need to depend on me. No! Be reasonable, Elizabeth. No! It has to be. Never! Are you satisfied, Abby? I won't be satisfied until I can call this house my own. You've been a good father to her, Andrew, and if she can't see that, more's the pity for Elizabeth Borden. Where are you going? To send the other one on her way. That one's up to no good. A sad house when the hens do all the crowing. Elizabeth, come down, will you? Be reasonable. We'll work out something. Elizabeth? Elizabeth, why won't you answer me? Elizabeth! You still home, Father? Hmm? I thought you'd be at the bank by now. I have <clears throat> a few things to attend to here. Where are you off to? Alice and I are going shopping. Maybe I'll find something extra special and buy it for you. That would be thoughtful of you, Emma. You run along and say hello to Alice for me. Yes, Father, I will. You seem preoccupied. Are you all right? <clears throat> yes, yes. Go along. Awfully hot, isn't it? It is. Yes. I'll be back in time for lunch. I'll be leaving now, Andrew. There's no need. You've made the need. I'd be happy to give you the small sum I mentioned. I'm not one to be grateful for small offers. Aren't you going to say goodbye to the girls? They're not girls, Andrew. They're women. And I prefer to write to my nieces. Less awkward. I'll get out the buggy and drive you to the station. No need. Do you believe in the Almighty? What a strange question. Most certainly I do. I always have. I always shall. Then you must realize you'll be punished. Good day, Andrew. Come back, Vinny. Be sensible. Take my offer! Where's Aunt Finney going? <clears throat> uh, where were you, Elizabeth? Outside. Didn't you hear me call to you? No, and you didn't answer my question. Where's Aunt Finney going? She's leaving Fall River. When? Now. Without saying goodbye? She's angry with me. She'll come to her senses in time. She said she'd write to you girls. More of your wife's doing? Abby is right. You've never given her a chance. I'll go to the station and see Aunt Penny. Do as you please. I'm out of patience with all of you. Abby, come down, will you? Abby? Abby, can you hear me? Abby! Bridget? Is that you? Bridget? Who is it? Who's out there? Whoever it is, show yourself. No. Don't. No. 
No! Hello? Can I help you? Do you want something? Father, who is that running from the yard? Father? I couldn't find her anywhere, Father. Did she say what train she'd be taking? I forgot my keys to the back. Sorry, Miss Lizzie. This heat is awful, isn't it? You look so pale. I'll take the groceries. You'd better go up and rest. Oh, thank you. I shouldn't walk in the morning sun. It always makes me feverish. Run along. A nap will do you good. Miss Lizzie, what is it? What happened? What's the matter? Run and get help. Someone's murdered father. There's blood on your hands. Someone's murdered father. Are you a snake, Patrolman Harrington? Snakes hiss. Men do not. I didn't want to come in if Miss Borden was about. She's in her room. Anyway, you'll come and go as you please, don't you? Such a fine lady she is. How could anyone think she could do such a thing? People have wicked minds. I admire the way she has kept her calm. The doctor gives her medicine. That helps. How about you? Helping me to a cup of coffee? The pot's on the stove. I like company. Bridget, who are you talking with? It's Patrolman Harrington. I assume this past month has been dull duty for you, Mr. Harrington. Not at all, miss. Many curious people on the sidewalk this morning? Only a few. Can't imagine why they come. Nothing to see but the outside of this house. Number 92 Second Street, Fall River, Massachusetts. I suspect they're hoping to catch a glimpse of you. Why? Curiosity. No, not that. They think I murdered my father and his wife. They want to tell their grandchildren that they once saw a famous axe murderess. Never mind if she's innocent. Now, now, Miss Lizzie, it's wrong with you to think and talk that way. They'll catch whoever done it. When? Soon, Mrs. Borden. Soon. It would be comforting if I could believe that. I'll go outside and see that they don't come into the yard. Are you going to have breakfast? No. You eat so poorly. Not surprising, is it? It's good we've got police about. Those first days when the mob gathered outside, I was frightened out of my skin. So was I. Terrified would be more like it. See who it is. Are you up to seeing anyone? I'm fine. It's Mr. Jenning. Come in, Mr. Jenning. You've brought good news, haven't you, Mr. Jenning? All in good time, all in good time. Go along, Bridget. Let me know if you need anything. I will. Feeling better today? One day is like another. You've seen the latest papers. I haven't seen the newspapers in over a week. Half seem to think I'm guilty of sin. The others see me a victi victim of circumstances. You're quite the celebrity, Miss Borden. I wish only to be left alone. We must be prepared. For what? In case the tide should turn against us. Is that likely? We must consider the possibility. Mr. Jenning, don't think me ungrateful, but I find your services premature. You're only here because the Reverend Mr. Judd believes that I need legal assistance. He is quite right. I understood his concern. It's common knowledge that my father and his wife were not on good terms with me, nor I with them, so the main assumption is that I murdered them in rage and revenge and cold blood. Assumption is not proof of guilt, Miss Borden. If you are charged... Do not be absurd. If you are charged, the prosecution will bring up a far more damaging motive than that which you have suggested. Oh? Your father was a wealthy man. My sister and I are dependent. We have a trust fund set up by my mother. Your father's estate is valued at half a million dollars. His will states that it is to be divided into three equal parts, wife and two daughters. Since Abby Borden is deceased, her share falls to you and your sister Emma. You are the two wealthiest women in Fall River. If you are charged, the burden of proof of innocence will be on you, and me as your legal counsel. Do you think it will come to that? I generally repeat that I think we should be prepared. In your deposition to the city marshal, you claim you saw a man running from the yard before you discovered your father's body. Yes, I called after him, but he kept on running. Did anyone else see this man? How many times must I go over this? As many times as I think necessary. These are the same questions the prosecutor will present. 
Mrs. Churchill was on her front porch. She must have seen him. She says not. Well, she's lying. Why would she lie? Miss Borden? Huh? Why would Mrs. Churchill lie about a thing like that? I don't know. We'll let that pass for the time being. You came into the house. Bridget Sullivan, your hired girl, entered through the front door. She forgot her key in the back. You suggested she take a nap. I took the groceries from her. Went into the sitting room. That's when I found father. You stooped down to examine the body. That's how I got blood on my hands. Worst comes to worst, our strongest point will be that there was no blood on your dress. Is that important? My dear Miss Borden, one can hardly murder two people with an axe, brutally, without some blood splashing on the killer's garments. An axe? How do they know it was an axe? They don't. It could be any hard-edged weapon, side of a shovel, an iron, almost anything. Whatever the weapon, they haven't found it. But you said axe. Only because Mr. Souza said he left his axe in the yard after chopping down a dead tree. The axe has never been found. Oh, I thought I heard you, Mr. Jennings. I'm glad you're here. Would you take a seat, Miss Emma? You're not going to bother her. It's all right, Lizzie. I want to help. You've sworn you heard an argument early the morning of the murders. I did. Your father was arguing with some man. Yes. The man sounded terribly angry. But you couldn't identify that man as Sousa? I'm sure it wasn't Mr. Sousa. How can you be so positive? I think I'm able to recognize the sound of Mr. Sousa's voice. Father was always arguing with someone. He had a morbid fear of foreigners. You mentioned that repeatedly. To father. Anyone south of Fall River was a foreigner. If we could find that man, we might be able to end this ugly business immediately. They've received your aunt's statement from New York. Poor Aunt Vinny. She would have to fall and break her head right when we need her. I really should go to her. Your place is here, Miss Emma. Yes. Yes, you're right. Your aunt's statement confirms that your father was alive before she left this house. Why not? It's true. We must convince the jury that it's true. Ah, yes. The jury. Twelve men. Also a male judge and a male prosecutor. And a male defense lawyer. I am at the mercy of men, it would seem. I must warn you against that sort of talk. It can only do you harm. I shall be on my way. Let me caution you against speaking to the reporters. They'll twist what you say. I'll see that she doesn't meet with them. Good day, ladies. I'll show myself out. Good day, Mr. Jennings. Would you like me to get your medicine? The doctor said you could take it as often as you like. The doctor's a quack. Thinks by doping me foolish, I'll sit quietly and behave. It might help. I'd rather feel alert and feel pain. At least when I feel pain, I know I'm alive. Oh, Emma, I don't know what I would have done without you. You've been such a comfort. Try not to worry. Trust in Providence. Lizzie, I have some wonderful news. They found the man? Well, no, not that. What then? The fellowship has passed a motion of support and we reaffirm our faith in you. That is wonderful news, Erin. I wish I were more myself. Thoughts are racing in my head. Please convey my appreciation to the fellowship elders. The idea that you could have done something so horrible, it's unthinkable. You've all been so kind. I don't know what I could do to repay you. I'm giving an interview to the press, but I thought I'd stop by and tell you the elders' decision. Yes, it is wonderful news. I thank you again, Aaron. Don't despair. We're all praying for you. You worked so hard to get that motion passed. Aaron is a friend. A true friend. I'm so lucky to have so many like you, Alice. Oh, I need to go upstairs for a moment. Poor thing. She's exhausted. It's all the town has been talking about. The murders? Even the New York papers are full of it. There was a rumor that they were going to charge Mr. Souza. Because he quarreled with Father? Yes. In that case, they'd have to arrest half the workmen in Fall River. Father fought with them all, usually over money. Mrs. Churchill hasn't been much help. She's spreading all sorts of gossip. I'm not surprised. She says if they brought Lizzie to trial, she'd buy her way out. That's contemptible. I'm afraid there are a lot of people who don't like the Borden name. Father and Abby weren't exactly likable people. And Lizzie has offended so many with her manner. 
people who don't understand her. If only she could get away for a rest. I've suggested that, but the city marshal forbids it. What kind of justice is that? Lizzie hasn't been charged with anything, and yet they treat her like a common criminal. The officials have been more than courteous. I don't think they want anything to do with the case. Fall River has never accused a woman of murder in all its history. What have you got there? Just an old dress. I spilled ink on it. I can't get the stains out. She says she doesn't take the medicine the doctor gives her, but she does. It makes her muddled. Isn't that the dress Lizzie wore the day of the murders? I didn't notice. I'm sure it's the same dress. What if it is? I don't think she should take out any stains. Alice, it can't be the same dress. Lizzie! Lizzie! Why are you shouting? That dress. It isn't the one you wore the day of the murders. Yes, it is. I've never liked it, and the ink's ruined it. Where have you put it? I'm burning it in the stove. Lizzie, you didn't! What's wrong? Lizzie, did the patrolman see you put the dress into the stove? Yes, he was standing right outside the screen door. What have you done? What's wrong? I couldn't pull it out. Most of it smothered in flame. Why is my dress so important? Don't you know? I'm so confused. Lizzie, Mr. Jennings stressed it not more than a minute ago. He said the strongest defense you have is the fact there was no blood splattered on your dress. You destroyed that defense, Lizzie. What could you have been thinking of? What have I done? Yes, what have you done? They'll find the man you hired to argue with father. They've got to. The city marshal is coming to the house. There's a crowd following him. I'm sure it's something routine. More questions, perhaps? I'm sick of questions. The city marshal is for you. Ladies. Good of you to drop by, Marshal. This isn't a social call. I didn't think it was. You found the man Lizzie saw running from the house? No. Question Mrs. Churchill. Ask her why she's lying. She insists she saw no one running from the yard. What does it matter? What does any of it matter? I didn't mean to upset you, Miss Borden. I'm, I'm sure you didn't. Forgive me, my nerves. I've been under such a strain. Is it any wonder? You must understand. This is a peculiar case. You see, the killer had to be familiar with the house. Why? You were nearby. Your hide girl was about to return. Your aunt had just left the premises. The house wasn't exactly deserted. The killer had to strike down your mother. She's not my mother. She was my father's wife. Strike her down without making a sound. The same with your father. Then escape without being seen. I saw him. All of this in broad daylight, tied to the second, no margin for error. Am I the prime suspect? I wish it didn't point in that direction. I want to know the truth. Well, Miss Borden, yes. You are the prime suspect. No! But the man father fought with. I heard him so clearly. We will continue our search. You see, this isn't a case of the actual killings alone. What do you mean? The autopsy. The findings were brought in before a grand jury. There were cases of arsenic poisoning. Arsenic? Not enough to kill, unless given sufficient doses over a prolonged period. You're saying someone tried to poison the Bordens? A woman visited the pharmacist about two months ago. The pharmacist remembers. She made a fuss about signing the register. What woman? I bought the arsenic for tree rats. They infested the barn. That's right. They're all over the barn. I hate to go in there. You mustn't take Miss Lizzie. You can't. Shh. Bridget. Am I to go with you? Yes. I'm innocent, Marshal. I'll go with you. I'm afraid that's not allowed. Harrington. I feel like Marie Antoinette on her way to the guillotine. <laughs> I'm sorry, that joke was in poor taste, wasn't it? Miss Emma's in the kitchen. I'll let her know you're here. Uh. What was your name again? Robsart. Amy Robsart. I'm with the New York Sun. I should have remembered. Make yourself at home. Miss Robsart! I've been baking. My hands are sticky. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I was afraid you wouldn't see me. You've been most sympathetic to my sister. I appreciate that. 
I believe it's a question of empathy. I know of your sister's work in the women's rights movement. One of Lizzie's favorite causes. I'm quite active in the movement myself. Did you know that? No. I believe it's important that we stick together. Yes. All the attention has flowed to your sister. Oh, I don't feel as if I've been ignored. I didn't mean it like that. I want to hear what you have to say. You mean about the murders? I'm sure you'll agree that the investigation was sloppy. Even the Boston Papers admit that. I wouldn't know if the investigation was sloppy or not. Whoever murdered your father and stepmother had ample time to do away with the evidence and heaven knows what else. That's what people are saying. That could work in Lizzie's favor. She has many friends. Many enemies, too. Why do you suppose the police dared arrest your sister? Considering the lack of hard evidence, her social position in Fall River? I believe I can answer that. Please do. You must understand. What I say is only a theory. My own. Go on. I believe the police had to find a murderer to save face. After all, this case is the most... How shall I put it? Spectacular they've ever had. They couldn't find the man I heard arguing with Father that morning, and if they didn't come up with something, they would look foolish. You're saying your sister was chosen because she was available? I'm not sure I'd put it quite that way, but I do believe the police made an assumption and did everything in their power to make the facts fit. May I quote you? If you wish. You and your sister were close. Very close. Yes. Your mother died when you were quite young. Yes, Lizzie brought me up. You admired her? Very much. There was nothing Lizzie couldn't do when she set her mind to it. If I had a problem, she solved it. If I were ill, she played nurse. If I was lonely, she took away the loneliness with companionship. For as long as I can remember, Lizzie has been there when I needed her. You share handsomely in your father's will. I wish I'd never heard of it. If the will didn't exist, the police wouldn't have the one motive they can understand. Murder for profit. Is it true that you and Lizzie ate separately from your father and stepmother? We never ate at the table with my stepmother. By choice? That was the way Lizzie wanted it. You didn't dispute the point? No. Did you hear that the YWCA has established a fund to help in your sister's defense? Yes, I knew that. So many have been so kind. Men hate admitting they're wrong. The police have had things pretty much their own way. However, they've been considerate. I've even taken some of Lizzie's personal things to her cell, including her vanity and dressing screen. You make it sound as if she were an actress preparing for a role. What will you do if the jury finds your sister... Guilty? Innocent. Well, thank heaven. Will you remain here in Fall River? I haven't given much thought to anything beyond each day and what it brings. I must speak with you. Oh. I didn't hear you knock, Mrs. Churchill. Now, perhaps we can finish this later in the day. Please stay, Miss Robsart. Can't you see I'm busy, Mrs. Churchill? I'm not leaving. Perhaps another time will be better. You've already been more than helpful. Thank you, Miss Borden. You have no right to come into this house. People are turning away from me in the street. They think I am deliberately lying about not seeing a man running from the house. Emma, you've known me for such a long time. Do you think I would lie about something as serious as this? I know you hate my sister. I don't hate her. I admit Lizzie and I didn't get along. I admit we shared harsh words. I I admit I was angry about her new position with the fellowship. A position you wanted. Yes! I admit that too, but I saw nothing. I am being punished for what I didn't see. Why don't you just tell the truth? I am telling the truth. Why don't you tell me? You hate Lizzie so much, you'd do anything to see her hurt. Punished. All right, I, I do hate her. I hate her. There. You heard me say it. Odd. What? Seeing you standing there with your back so straight, so smug, so composed. You remind me of your sister. P. 
people change. I may hate losing, but I'm not lying, I swear to you. Is that what you wanted to tell me? Emma, I, I have to live in this town. I have no place else to go. I am being treated as an outcast. What can I possibly do about that? If you would just speak to me in public where people could see that you aren't against me. If you would just say something in my favor to your friends, then people wouldn't treat me the way they do. I, I can't live with their accusing stares. Will you help me, Emma? Impossible. I I'm not asking, I am begging. You'd have it all your own way, wouldn't you, Mrs. Churchill? Lizzie would be gone, you'd have your revenge, and most likely the position you've always wanted with the Fellowship. I'd be the icing on your cake. It wouldn't be like that at all, wouldn't it? I'm not fooled by you, Mrs. Churchill. I know how strong your hate is. Carlotta's here. She brought fresh eggs. Shall I buy some? Mrs. Churchill is leaving. Yes. You've changed, Emma. You've become hard. Cold. Don't come back. You needn't worry about that. I don't want her in this house again, Bridget. Do you understand? Miss Emma. What is it? Some people say it's not going well with your sister. Some people will say anything. What they found with the, um, autop uh, autop uh, autop autopsy. autopsy? The traces of arsenic. That's damaging evidence, isn't it? It's one of the prosecution's strongest points. That and Lizzie burning the dress. What I mean to say is, if they hadn't found those traces of arsenic poisoning, it wouldn't look so bad for Miss Lizzie, would it? What are you driving at, Bridget? You haven't been yourself for weeks. I don't want anything to happen to Miss Lizzie because of me. She was always my friend. I didn't know they'd be murdered. I didn't know it would come to that. You have to believe me, Miss Emma. Bridget, what are you saying? I put the arsenic in their food, not Miss Lizzie. Bridget! I only wanted to make them a little sick. Your stepmother was always threatening to discharge me, and your father never had a kind word. It was wrong of me, I know. God will punish me. I shouldn't have done it. You said nothing to the police. Why? I was afraid. I was afraid to think I did the killing. You did a terrible thing, Bridget. I know. I know. Too late to worry about that. What am I going to do? We must go to Mr. Jennings at once. Tell him exactly what you've told me. I can't. They'll think I did the killing. If you don't, they'll hang my sister. No. You have nothing to fear. They'll put me in prison. I'll see that they don't. Do as I tell you, Bridget. You don't hate me, Miss Emma? Needn't worry about that. What are you standing there for? You go to Mr. Jennings, I'll go to the jail. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm going. Let's get Reverend Jubb. Must be careful how we break the news to Lizzie. I put the eggs on the table. Oh, Mrs. Souza, I forgot you were waiting. She tried to kill them with poison, huh? Listening at the door, I heard. She didn't try to kill them. She just wanted to make them ill. A stupid, childish prank. You better keep quiet about what you heard. Why do you buy from me? What are you talking about? You buy eggs from me when you have chickens in the barn. You let me take your laundry when Bridget could do it. If you'd rather not have my business, I suppose I could find someone else. Just thought, with all the trouble your husband's had, it would be the neighborly thing to do. We're not your neighbors. We live on the other side of the tracks. Foreigners. No one wants to help us. That's not true. You know what saves his neck? You. Other people say it was Souza, Souza. But you say the man you heard arguing with your father was not Souza. You saved his life, Miss Emma. All I did was tell the truth. Did you? You know what the little children sing? 
Lizzie bore the Pilkin axe and gave her mother forty wax. When she saw what she had done, she gave her father forty-one. I warn you, Miss Emma. Warn me? I think you wait and then change your story. Why would I do something like that? Because people in this town don't want your sister to hang. You stick together. She's one of you. They'll grab at anything that helps prove her innocent. You resent that. I've watched you carefully, Miss Emma. You've become so quiet. You can even say a line from that song the children sing and not choke. That doesn't mean I don't loathe it. Like a cat. That's you. When it looks as if there's no escape for your sister, you'll change your story. Everyone in Fall River will be grateful. After that, they'll come for my husband. Why would I wait so long to change my story? Because you're clever. People believed it was your sister. At first. Now they're not so sure. They'd like to blame someone else. You think I'll hand them your husband? Yes. Get out. Know something else, I think? I told you to get out. I think you know things you haven't told the police. Get out, I say! Why do you do that? Do what? Wash one hand with the other? Without soap or water? Some things you can't wash away, Miss Emma. Like murder. All these telegrams and letters. Did you ever see so many? Lizzie Borden is, is a celebrity, Reverend Jim. You'll have to remember that. I'm not likely to forget. Any sign of them? No, not yet. Maybe we should have met them at the courthouse. Too many people. Mr. Jennings said it'd be better if we just waited here. He put up a masterful defense. <laughs> when you come right down to it, they had nothing against Lizzie but circumstantial evidence. Might have been easier if the killer had robbed the house. That way Lizzie would have never been suspected. The important thing is that she's free, found not guilty. It hasn't been easy for Emma either. She's held up amazingly. Some people find a reservoir of strength during trying times. I'm afraid Emma always stood a bit in the shadow of Lizzie, younger sister and all. Lizzie has such a strong personality. I think I might do an article on the two of them. Loving sisters standing together, that sort of thing. I suppose such articles will go on forever. <laughs> Unavoidable. The public has a thirst for sensationalism. More's the pity. I'm certain there will be a few unhappy with the not guilty verdict. Some people are vindictive. However, Lizzie and Emma can't waste their time with them. People forget. In time, Fall River will forget too. Perhaps. I hope there won't be any unpleasantness. We must try to get things back to normal. She'll need our help. She's been through a terrible time. How she's held up all these months is beyond me. I would have had a nervous breakdown. I wonder if they'll ever find the real killer. I'm sure they will, and when they do, the authorities will have to make a public apology to Lizzie. They hounded her as if she were a Salem witch. But they couldn't convince the jury. Luckily. Would anyone like some tea? No, not for me, Emma, thank you. No. Without Bridget, I'm at a loss. I didn't realize how much I relied on her. I think she could have stayed until Lizzie got settled in. I couldn't persuade her. She's convinced my sister will never forgive her. That's not true. Lizzie has a most forgiving nature. I don't think she could look her in the face. Anyway, she's gone. Packed up this morning and took the early train to Boston. I'll miss her. Why are they taking so long? Technicalities. That's what the law is, a mass of technicalities. Mm -hmm. uh, this morning's mail? Yes, all expressing the hope that she'll be acquitted. All? Well, there are the, the usual one or two hateful letters. Unsigned, naturally. Naturally. I've grown wary answering the mail. Lizzie can deal with that about herself. I trust she'll plan a long holiday. Do you think she'll travel, Emma? I never try to second guess my sister. They're inside waiting for you, Miss Borden. I'm hurrying. They're here. We must try not to mention the ordeal. That won't be easy, Aaron. She's home safe. Emma! Welcome home, Lizzie. Welcome home. <laughs> You've been such a source of strength, such a friend. I don't know what I would have done without your support. Oh, Lizzie, we've missed you so! I've missed you too, <laughs> so much!
You should sit down. You must be exhausted. I am. Completely. I can't believe I'm home. You don't know the nights I've spent tossing in my cot, wondering if I'd ever see this place ever again. Try not to think about it. You mustn't spare my feelings, Erin. I'll never be able to get this nightmare on my mind. But you must, Lizzie. You must try. These things take time. And you, Miss Ropsart, you've been most kind. I've read every word that you've written. I don't know how I'll be able to thank you properly either. Your acquittal is my thanks. Nor you, Mr. Denning. We owe a great deal to Bridget. If she hadn't come forth and confessed to her part in the food poisoning... Where is Bridget? Something wrong? She's gone, Lizzie. Gone? This morning, she took the train to Boston. Did she say where she'd be going? Did she leave an address? No, nothing. Poor Bridget. The question is, will they find the man they heard arguing with your father? In time. I pray so. We must let her rest. Would you mind terribly? I will be myself, I'm sure of it, in a few days. We wanted to be here for a moment when you came home. To say welcome. I appreciate it so very much. All I can seem to think about is the words the clerk said to the jury. I can't get them out of my head. To each count of which indictment, Lizzie Andrew Borden, the prisoner at the bar, has heretofore pleaded and said that thereof she is not guilty. Such archaic wording. One would think Massachusetts was medieval England. I think we should allow Miss Borden some privacy. You're quite right. I have some matters I must speak to you about, but they can wait. Thank you, Mr. Jenning. Come along, Alice, Miss Robsart. A victory. Total victory, Miss Borden. Nothing less. Come along, come along. It's a wonderful feeling to know one has friends. Can I get you something to eat? No, Bridget can fix me something later. I forgot. There's no one here but the two of us, Lizzie. We're alone. Why are you staring at me? Don't you know? If I did, I wouldn't be asking. Sit beside me. No. Why not? I don't want to. Emma, you've acted so strangely this past few months. Have I? I owe you so much. Your testimony was the key factor in my defense. Mr. Jennings said we would have been lost without it. And you were so brave on the stand. You never wavered. Felt I owed you that. Owed me? You told the truth, that's all. Did I tell the truth? Yes, you heard someone arguing with Father that awful morning. No. Lizzie, I did not. What are you saying? I made up that story. No, you didn't. I've heard Father argue with many people. Yes, so have I, but I didn't hear anyone that morning. Don't you get it? I made it up. I lied. Oh, Emma. Then I owe you even more than I thought. You lied to help me. You lied because you knew I was innocent in your heart. No, Lizzie. Remember how we used to hide things when we were girls? In the place in the chimney? Our secret place. No one knew about it but you and I. We found the axe the day of the murders. And you think I did it? Uh, there was no blood on my dress. You changed your dress between the time you sent Bridget for help and it arrived. Bridget didn't notice. You have changed. Yes. I'm no longer innocent about life. I never want to see or hear from you again. You're wrong, I tell you. I don't want any of the money. You can have it all. This house, too. This house? I'll sell it! No, you won't, Lizzie! I know you too well for that. You'll keep this house and live in it, if only to show Fall River you've nothing to hide. Isn't it funny, the way things work out? I've always liked this house, but I'm leaving it. You have always hated it, but it will become your prison. You can say these things to me and mean them? Mrs. Churchill said I'd become like you. Cold and hard. I will never forgive you for that, Lizzie. 
I'm not taking anything with me. I'm going to Aunt Vinny. You lied because you knew I was innocent! I lied because I knew you were guilty and I had to save you! Goodbye, Lizzie. Emma? Emma, don't leave me! I'm frightened! Emma? To each count of which indictment, Lizzie Andrew Borden, the prisoner at the bar. If she is guilty, you are to say so, and if she is not, you are to say so, and nothing more. Good men, stand fast and true and hearken to your evidence. some important news. <laughs> okay. Um, Miss Burns messaged us. Okay. And you have been cast as Lizzie Borden. <laughs> Just letting you know. What are you saying, Mrs. Burns? Oh, I think she's going to cry so much. No, <laughs> no, I'm so good. Wait, really? Yeah, really. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Why would I joke about that? Oh my god.